So the LaRouche Policy Committee is spending another week in Washington, D.C., and it's certainly a very intense week. We know we're getting close to a breaking point on Glass-Steagall because of the hot reactions, uh, aides defending the Saudis, in spite of the fact that the Saudis coordinated the 9-11 attacks, which killed thousands of Americans, J.P. Morgan bankers roaming Capitol Hill, and speeches being given on the floor of the Congress in defense of Glass-Steagall and also think tank symposium discussions opposing Glass-Steagall. So surely with the German elections approaching, we're at the brink of a major blowout of the transatlantic financial system where Glass-Steagall becomes an inevitability and therefore the drive for war, which has been temporarily, hopefully, our intent is permanently pushed to the side with the work of LaRouche, General Dempsey, and Putin and other statesmen around the world pulling our insane president back from the brink. And now a great potential for Glass-Steagall, which surely can't be missed, and we're picking it up all over Capitol Hill as our activities at various of the hearings running into congressmen on the hallways and the street corners and the crowds of Americans who are here who are clearly very dissatisfied with the direction of things in the country, but also hopeful about the shift that's occurring. As all this is happening, Obama is going down. And uh, I think people were pretty familiar with the fact that Larry Summers was the choice of Obama to head up the uh, Federal Reserve. And uh, because of the defeat by Obama and his, the general collapse of his presidency, but the defeat on the, the Syria war, uh, Larry Summers uh, really unprovoked withdrew his name uh, from the nomination um, because it was generally recognized that uh, having Obama's backing behind him was sort of a, a kiss of death at this point. Um, and it also indicates the growing fight for Glass-Steagall because Larry Summers, under the Clinton administration, was the one who was brought in to bring down Glass-Steagall. And people are very familiar with that. So it is a moment in which uh, Obama's demise means that we've got to strike while the iron's hot. Yeah, and it hasn't gone unrecognized today by Congress members and anyone on Capitol Hill that we're out today exposing the enemy hardcore. We have a banner out today that says, do the Saudis own your congressman? Release the 28 pages on 9-11. And this is, has really created a real thrust in the organizing. Uh, for one thing, I've attended a hearing this morning on the Armed Services Committee where the Armed Services Committee was there discussing budget sequestration for the military. And, you know, the main thing that as talking to Congress members after this hearing, I made clear is the only way we're going to deal with this crisis is we have to get Glass-Steagall through and we have to actually go after the Saudi funding that's controlling our Congress members, that's pushing this insane drive for war towards Syria, and is actually putting our military to the brink of total destruction. And we also, I got a report from another representative that he was at a Benghazi hearing this morning, and all of the Congress members that were speaking, that he spoke with, were very keened in to the importance of these 28 pages and wanted to know, I have to get my hands on these 28 pages. We have to do something about this. Uh, very attentive to what we were saying about the need to immediately crush the role of the Saudis, the British influence on the Congress, and also that uh, they understand that this is all connected. If you want to get to the bottom of 9-11, 1 in 2001, 2011, if you want to get to the bottom of the Benghazi, then everything has to happen around, one, getting Obama out, but also around getting these 28 pages released now. So it's clear we intend to bankrupt Wall Street. We intend to rip out this secret government apparatus. And I think people should have a sense that this secret government apparatus 
intervened into the establishment of this country in the 1680s. It established a tyranny rule over the initial colonies of Massachusetts and others in New England. It introduced a large uh, the chattel slavery program throughout the southern states and the plantations as a direct intervention on the industrial policies of our colonies. It has reestablished itself directly under our constitutional government with Aaron Burr's assassination of Alexander Hamilton and the establishment of a Wall Street faction directly inside the presidency, specifically seen and best seen under Andrew Jackson, who shut down the Second National Bank. And so our intention is to rip out this historic legacy of the British Empire inside the United States. That means Glass-Steagall getting passed, bankrupting Wall Street, exposing this foreign control of our government, these Saudi dogs who are intimidating Congress, and going back to a policy, which now a number of the members of Congress, because of a series of interventions that have been made, the war crisis, the fight for Glass-Steagall, are beginning to recognize that a return now to John F. Kennedy's legacy of nuclear desalination, the Nawapa program, the Bering Strait developments, these are now on the table as viable projects, projects in a Glass-Steagall system. And that's the dedication. Now we're going to continue to push that. Thanks.